Uh, they are doing pretty great. I actually walked by them um, on my way to the bathroom, and one of them was sitting in uh, their water bowl, and like they poked their head out. It's kind of like, what? You got a problem with that? Huh? Probably that, probably because they had a, they had a bit of a trouble shed, so they're probably just uh, doing a bit of soaking, get the last bits, get the last bits off. I'm gonna poop it. Yeah, 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 he's gonna do that. You know what, I would rather he do that than um, flip his damn water bowl. I had a, I had a couple months, um, or a couple months, a couple weeks, where as soon as I filled his water bowl back up and put it in, he would flip it over. And so then I'd immediately have to refill it and then I'd have to scrape out all of the uh, the Aspen that got soaked because uh, Aspen molds pretty easily in uh, when it gets wet. So you know, I gotta, I gotta replace all that. And he just kept doing it. I'm like, fucking Dantes, kill, you're killing me, bro. You're killing me. I hope you're having a good day. Hopefully we can finish uh, Mendax proxy or Neuronet. But yeah, Neuronet Mendax proxy today. I figured I had stopped halfway through, but this has been a very long chapter. Um, go to the community college. She sneaks into the college grounds. Later that night, however, she is discovered by the guardsmen, much to her distress. Stuff's been a little gloomy around here recently. I want to liven things up. Uh, here, I've got a joke for you. Knock, knock. Who's there? You. You who? Rue gives you an emphatic wave. Yes, hello, I see you. That's more like it. We found Pop a ocular implant with some blood on it. Looks like whoever owned this ran into some trouble. Can you analyze it? The implant was purchased years ago. Problem is, the buyer wasn't necessarily the user. I've only managed to get a couple of credits today. Do you know a place where I could find some food for this much? I mean, the noodle market? I mean, I might be a little bit biased here, but hey. She manages to locate a vendor selling raw veggies with some actual nutritional value. Hey, I have to go through the subway again. Think you can do that thing again where you stop all the noise? Yes. It's time for a funding round for the corporate police agencies. How much should we provide this time? Hey, Golo Dat, welcome on by. Uh, funding for police agencies? Oh man, unfortunately we've got to cut their funding. Man, it's such a shame. Someone keeps tagging my walls. I don't want to spend every other night washing it off. What should I do? Uh, commission them. You help Rue catch the vandal. He offers to pay them to do a full art piece, which they do. Ends up bringing a lot of publicity. Hell yeah. If we establish a temporary curfew in Chantelar, it'll help us investigate mob activity. Think it's worth the unrest it'll cause? Uh, no. I want to introduce a therapeutic rehabilitation program to our penitentiaries. It'll be costly, though. Think it's worth it? Um, I don't. Can we just shut the penitentiaries down? Period. Like, ugh. Yes. I found a guy who's giving me some change to deliver a package to his friend. Can you help me find this address? Dronification. No, misfit. Down. Down. <laughs> She doesn't feel safe going to that part of town either. She pockets the change and leaves the package in a dumpster. One of my suspects is playing hard to get. Can you organize a meeting with them that I might coincidentally show up to? Sure. I can actually afford advertising here. Where should I focus my efforts? Bus stops. Perfect. Your food truck. You want the trains? The ads are so quick to get graffitied over. There's no real point in having them. <laughs> I'm exhausted, and the warmth in the van is making me so sleepy. Do you think it's okay if I just take a rest? Absolutely. 
Rue doesn't seem to mind. If anything, he finds it endearing. As he closes down for the night, he awakens her with a hot meal. Oh, bless his heart. placed a meat hook program in the hospital's main systems. We've managed to trap it in an isolated server. Ah. Uh, a loitering virus that hides in a server waiting for a neural link to hijack. Once a victim is hooked, it gives its operator access to the victim's neural link. Well, that's, uh, dangerous and devious. Would you be able to take a look at it? We need to know where it came from. Yes. You enter the server with the program and manage to extract information on how it was made, but not before it rips into you. Attacking a hospital is an act of terrorism. Thompson eagerly tracks the maker down, but he catches before the week is over. Instead of being out there making myself useful, I'm stuck in here filing stupid forms. Is there any way you can speed this up? You scour the records for any files that address existing points in his cases, creating reference links for him to use. <laughs> yeah, we need a tech priest in here. As your involvement in Chantelier grows, so does the people's awareness of you. Fuck off! Oh, we got the punks. The woman sprays one of your cameras with thick paint, rendering it useless. Last thing you see are masked figures in the background, raising their middle fingers. You know what? Fair enough. You get back to work. Tonight is so cold. It's getting harder to breathe. You've got to help me find somewhere warmer than here. Uh, what about the greenhouse? It's humid, but at least it's warm. Someone has been turning off security cameras and canopy. Seemingly at random. Are you able to intercept it at all? I can try. Whoever designed the program made a ghost. You have to dedicate a significant amount of power to tracking its movements. I'm trying to sleep, but the scram keeps screaming straight into my brain every two minutes. Can you mute it? Just for tonight? Holographic advertising. Damn, those Instagrams right to your brain. So also to talk. Yeah, we haven't talked to Cordo at all, which is very weird. Um, it's certainly spending a lot of time building up the Rue and little girl. We've kind of abandoned, you know, that whole thing Cordo did. Like, uh, it's kind of weird that we're suddenly like focusing so much to build. Like, I don't know if we're gonna maybe get with the police detective to investigate Cordo somehow. I don't know. No, Cordo's still around. He's the new, um, he replaced, uh, Kershaw. Kershaw. Yes. All my scheduled interviews got cancelled, and I'm still waiting on search warrants to be verified. For once, I have free time. Catch up on paperwork. <sighs> if you're really, really quiet, you can hear yourself doing the world a favor. I want to address the minimum wage for workers. The financial leaders of Katana can definitely afford it. They just don't want to. Raise the wage. Raise the wage. The discovery of the backdoor and mindcore systems led you to an led you to implement additional security in case similar activity is detected. Oop. They hit my tripwire. What do we got? You intercept the program you are notified about. It is indeed hostile. Message file, superior message box, context, overwrite port access. Okay, so they're trying, okay. Trying to open up a port. Ages for Trojan virus has infected connection pathways to societal management nodes. Signal loss terminated at source. Virus connection to data access sustained. Query data posted. Nope, it forces me. All right, we're going through another one of these, it looks like. Societies rely on their finite supply. Assume too much and look collapse and die. What are they? If left unchecked, I grow out of control. So there is no space to breathe and grow. What am I? No, it's definitely bureaucracy. 
Definitely bureaucracy. Society advances, and yet it still thrives, making life a constant struggle to survive. Aubrey. In number we rise, our needs do too, but fair distribution is long overdue. Reformat it. Ooh, this time you made sure to run some analytics on the program while it was active. You have enough information to start a profile of its design and behavior. Not afraid to tell, I see. I'll be sure to remember that. Who are you? Really? That's your first question? Alright, fucking Ichigo ass looking chuckle fuck. The voice disappears without a trace. May as well have been a ghost. Oh no, he's gonna hit us with a Sharingan next time we fight. There's nothing left to do with you return to work. Hospitals are demanding better wages for floor staff. Our budget is pretty tight at the moment. Should we oblige? Yes. yes. Riddler from Arkham Origins. I, I, I don't really play any of the Batman in games. Some way. What should we do? The king can decorate. Rue hoists the kid onto the roof of the van, where she's able to set up decorations and light fireworks throughout the night. I'm going to drown in this rain. Where should I go? I feel like she gets rained on a lot. There's a garage nearby where city trams are stored while awaiting maintenance. You override the lock and let the kid in. You check in on the lab to find Kairos on his comms with someone. He purses his lips. Okay. No, no, I got it. He clicks his comm shut and strolls over. RG, RG, RG. Aren't you in trouble, my friend? I am. Seems like resistance in Shintalar is growing, and you are their rally. Me? Your existence is just too damn convenient. Some people will use any excuse to advance their agendas. He looks scornfully out the window. Mobs are becoming more and more prevalent throughout the district. It might be a case of unification through shared adversity. You know what I mean? Despite me having maximum happiness in society? Yeah, okay, dude. What exactly can we do? Um, not much, unfortunately. Just keep your eyes open for now. Karos goes back to his desk, looking distracted. You get back to work. Really? No Corto the entire chapter. Okay, dude. This town won't tolerate infestation. Kill it with fire. Ah, uh, this is about the uh, the death of um, Pershaw. He had a lot of alcohol in his system. The virus Mikkel. All right. AI yeah, bill passed. Okay. Support the fight against corruption. Kershaw simply slipped on a banana. Yeah, you know those those uh, dangerous Mario Kart uh, races nearby. You know, sometimes things just go errant. A little bit of put. A shameless distraction on your worldly woes. His name is Pudding. Oh, it's like, wait a minute. She asked me to look up extinct animals. No, her cat's extinct. No. The future is awful. Got mugged. Huh? Where is... This the kid to help her. All right, we have a lot of stuff on the timeline. Defeated the virus, Pierre. Oh, I didn't realize each of the viruses had names like that. Violence is on the rise. The mind core's seemingly misguided optimism in extending the neural net to Chantelier speaks closer to the delusion than desperation. I struggle to comprehend how Corto can believe that spreading the arc archetypes 
Influence further into the city could be beneficial. And it was the incompetence of the machine that put us in this depression in the first place. Let me be clear, I'm not saying that the architect is solely to blame for the economic crisis, but... The tension in Chantelier has been increasing rapidly since Ark's introduction. Are you concerned about a repeat of George Street riots? No, it's not to my interest to engage in nearly fear-mongering. These are just your usual hooligans with a new reason to cause a fuss. Everything is under control. What about the increased reports of vandalism, mine course property? Look, this interview was a courtesy, but don't waste my time with inane questions about... Honestly, I don't get it. Ark's barely capable of setting a calendar date without having a meltdown, yet people act like their arrival in Chatelier is the end of times. What's the deal? I think it's more about control than surveillance. What control? Ark is powerless to control anything, honestly. The whole project is a mess. They've got more bugs than a Chatelier B&B. Maybe that's why they don't want Ark in the district. They've had enough already. I'm really excited for the arrival of the Neuronet and Chantelier. Arc has been such an impact on the lives of those who have opened up to them. We've got businesses booming, better education, counseling, and companionship. Arc has so much to offer. People just need to be more willing to give them a shot. Are you concerned about the people of Chantelier will reject the Neuronet? I'm not concerned about whether the net will pick up in Chantelier. Perception so far has been overwhelmingly positive in other regions. What does concern me is Chantelier's attitude towards the mine core and the narrow net might delay the good that it could bring to the district. Alright, we finally got money to the bottom. Police didn't downgrade, hate that for me. But we kept our powder in society, so we got that going for us. Crash and burn. Okay. It's getting colder. I'm nearly freezing to death each night, but I don't have a blanket or anything. How can I stay warm? Uh, club vents? Yeah. You direct her to an underground club with vents outside that outputs substantial heat. Fortunately, the bouncers chase her away. I bought an old casino wheel. Hey, get this, Nugget. Friday night, roulette. Huh? Huh? People are gonna love it. There are strict gambling laws in Cantina, though they are often ignored in Chantelier. She can slip some credits to the right palm. Bigger worry. Should be catching the attention of the local crime gangs who are fighting for control of this gambling. I think roulette has a ring to it. The people love it. As they should. Hypothetically, what would you rather take responsibility for? Credits disappearing into thin air? Or defacing of public property. What would... What would rather take responsibility? What? What would I rather take responsibility for? Also, are we just going to get fucking random hacker man questions now? Let's put that into practice. Due to their words, several storefronts in Central Canopy have their displays hacked to show images of turkeys running in circles. The CPA wants us to reform our weapons control legislation to allow officers to openly carry pulse weaponry. Do you support it? No. no. I have this idea for coupons, the get a free drink with this combo sort of thing. How should I distribute them? Use the kid. The kid spends her afternoons handing them out around town. Rue's customer base is notably larger the next weekend. Think you're getting close to finding me? Should I be getting worried? Yes. Can you trust the info you have on me? How can you be sure I haven't fed it to you? Fucking Sharingan eye ass motherfucker. Trust, I'll catch you. <laughs> I love it when you get feisty. Fucking weird man. Hey, Nugs. You got a minute? I could use a hand with some accounting. Sure. No matter how many times I go over this, the numbers don't add up. I've triple checked every single chit and counted out the cash a dozen times. I have the values here. What about tips? The kid takes those, unless they're given to me directly. Everyone made it to the stake. I've scoured the truck fully. It's the cleanest it's ever been. Oh no. <laughs> I don't think there's anything else I could have missed. 
There's a definite discrepancy between what Root earned over the week. What is actually in his this till? Ah, oh, I thought so. How did this happen? Where's the girl? You have a better shot of figuring that out than I do. She didn't show tonight. You're not suggesting. You're being bald. Rue frowns. Something you're not familiar seeing. Mm, that's quite the bat you're swinging around there. Someone might get hurt. You're getting hurt. He shakes his head. I don't want to hear it, Nugs. I'll figure this out. Thank you for your help. You decide to give him some space. You keep an eye out for the kid. I've got a case that's proving hard to lock down. Everyone involved is being very tight-lipped. Oh no. If I asked for video recordings from specific private establishments, is that something you could give for me? Yes. Movement outside a comms repair shop at Chantelier catches your attention. A few hours past midnight. Well, this is some music. A group of masked figures break through the front window and pile in. Look at this place. Scum. They start tearing down the shelves, scattering their contents all over the floor. There. A stocky figure separates from the group and heads to the wall the leader is pointing at. He unclips a canister from his belt. He sprays a distinct emerald green logo of a square shattering. You've seen this a few times throughout the city. Trekkie A cap, also Trekkie. Fuck the Fourth Amendment. That's, that's, don't worry about it. It's fine if I do it. I'm the all powerful AI. See? All powerful AI. You can trust my judgment. See, look how happy everyone is. <laughs> the leader scans the room until she spots your camera. You're mine. A Ayo? She grabs a nearby chair and climbs on it to reach you. What the hell is going on? A door, leading deeper into the building, opens up and a portly man steps out, hefting a large shotgun. Fuck. Upon seeing the shopkeeper, the gang scatters for cover. Gunfire thunders throughout the shop. Run! Shotgun clicks empty and the intruders flee through the shattered window. Except one. Oh, I finally got one. A boy, no more than 19 and now unmasked, lies on the floor, clutching his leg. Blood slowly pools below him. Ah, you fucking... You, you fucking shot me! Fuck! Uh, yeah? Yeah? Shotkeeper smiles as he loads more rounds into the gun's chamber. Wait, no! Shit! Boy throws two bloody hands in front of him. Should have thought of that before breaking into people's property, huh? Shopkeeper shoulders the gun and makes a call instead. After some time, a pair and suit show up to take the boy away. On the way out, they give a white envelope to the shopkeeper. I hope this covers all the damage this time. <sighs> One of the suits nods and they leave. Shopkeeper sighs and walks to the back door, returning with a broom. Thankfully, the rest of the night is uneventful. All right. I was worried for a moment that the shopkeeper was about to kill that kid. Nugs, it's an emergency. I've run out of napkins, but I've got a backlog of dockets. What should I do? Send the kid. I need to find someone who might be willing to share some credits. Who should I talk to? Public gardener. The civil gardener assigns her with picking up rubbish around the parks. For a long afternoon, he buys her dinner. These mobs are getting out of hand. If we don't try to get Chantelar under control, something's going to break. What should we do? Crack some skulls? Good nope. luck. As soon as you take action, you lose connection to the Neuronet in the northeast part of Chantelier. Hmm. That's weird. What's going on? One of the Chantelar towers is no longer reachable. Is that bad? Only in the way that if I cut off one of my fingers, that would be bad. Yikes. She rubs her chin and runs some diagnostics. It's as if it just puffed out of existence. Oh no, it fell into the void. The world is ending. You don't have any visuals on the tower, but you detect a news broadcast in that area. What the hell? It's the punks of the hacker man. 
You bring up a feed of a helicopter, look at the Neuronet Tower. A reporter is talking over the footage. The damage is substantial. There's a 10-foot hole in one of the walls. You see flickers of fire through thick smoke. As of yet, there have been no reports of injuries. Your archive of the tower's attendance sheet shows there was no one present. Evidence suggests that this was an organized attack. A familiar emerald green logo of a square shattering is sprayed on the side of the building. Neither Minecorn nor government officials have given a statement about this new movement. Yet they only seem to grow. How long will these organizations stand on the sidelines? Yeah, the uh, pucks are definitely disaffected. You click the broadcast over. Damn it! We need to talk strategy with Thompson. We can't continue like this. I don't like him. You don't have to like him. You just have to work with him. Grumbled at EXE. She moves away from her desk and activates her comms. It's eerie how quickly the event fades and things go back to normal. Minister Bayou is claiming someone hacked his vehicle, causing the collision last week. Do you want to handle the investigation? Thou believer in the Book of Pim Pimlock, devoted to spreading the teachings of the Church, church of the Neon Word. Interesting. Yes. The minister's suspicion was correct. Looks like this was a ploy by the mob to intimidate him, and it worked. People keep a turn on the PCM 800 series, saying it's got shit connectivity. But the supplier insists the model isn't faulty. Popular and long-serving model of wireless data router, made by Smith & Jeeves Inc., a company that recently closed two factories due to poor sales of its new octaxial linear filter. I'll take a look. Take a look at the devices to find an incongruity with the transmitters from what they're supposed to have. Somewhere in the supply chain, their components have been swapped for cheaper versions. You know that guy I told you about? The one from the rally? Well, his name is Christy. And you see, uh, we've been chatting. Uh, a lot, actually. I want to ask him out. I was wondering if you had any ideas where we could go. Uh, music garden? <laughs> Classy. I like it. Well, I suppose we'll find out if he's a fan of Janye Late Blues or not. I'm not a fan of the new right to repair and modify bill that's being reviewed at the moment. Many Augment users feel that their Augments are their property to do with as they please, warranty be damned. Manufacturers themselves argue it is property tech, and if people want to change it, they can buy upgrades. Karos, uh... Check the bill. Targets the growth of unregulated modifications people are making to their vehicles. Oh, hmm. Many vehicles, particularly sky carts, have become unstable or downright dangerous due to unskilled or sabotaged mods. I get that these machines are getting super complicated, but if it goes through, I won't even be able to replace my headlights. Hmm. I'll have to pay some dude 300 creds to do it for me. Is there any way you can stop the bill going through? Um, well, this is certainly a topic with nuance, but I think right to repair. I mean, I'm glad Kairos is on the right side for right to repair. It's certainly, uh, this doesn't feel like a right to repair issue because it's talking about, like, mods. Like, adding shit to your vehicle to make it ins insanely dangerous. Like, when I'm thinking right to repair, it's literally to restore it to functionality or make modifications to, um, you know, like, you own the thing. I don't know. It doesn't feel right to me. I feel like it should be slightly different. Um, yeah, we'll stop the bill. As the day rolls by, more and more attacks on the Chantelier Towers take place. Some digital, but mostly physical. You're able to catch a fair few before they begin, but some slip by. Expansion of the Neuronet slows down considerably. By some miracle, no one has been injured in the attacks on the towers yet. Your attention is split between trying to prevent damages to your other responsibilities, 
I'm coordinating a volunteer cleanup of Chantelar, but it's proving difficult to get people involved. Do you think it's worth it? Yes. Absolutely. You detect an attack taking place on one of your towers and immediately start recon. This one's gonna be messy, ma'am. The young man in uniform is talking to another officer. Her hand dances across the surface of a tablet she's holding. Messy? Messy is my middle name, Sergeant. Uh, hmm. Inappropriate workplace fraternization. <laughs> Phrasing? Thought your middle name was Zori. Her hand freezes as she looks up from the tablet. The sergeant shrinks away. This is seven IEDs, ma'am. One on each floor. We make one mistake and the whole thing blows up. What about the people, Ron? Why am I still seeing movement inside? Beads of sweat break out on the sergeant's face. The sensors are everywhere. We think if anyone tries to enter or leave, it'll trigger the bombs. Lace each floor with pipe bomb. Lieutenant pinches the bridge of her nose. How does this even happen? She turns to her squad. All right, boys, listen up. We've got our work cut out for us on this one. It's an intricate job. I need everyone to focus. All right, so the police getting involved. How about a real professional sticks its binary into the problem? The sensors are piggybacking off the building's inbuilt security system, giving the terrorists full surveillance of its interior but also giving you access to the explosives trigger devices. You send a probe into each of the bombs. Getting inside is easy enough, but the setup is a little trickier. The bombs ping each other periodically. They are also set up to be rem triggered remotely if movement is detected at key locations. If one bomb fails multiple pings, it is considered compromised, triggering a dead man switch. Same goes for the motion sensors. Disable witch subsystem. You set up an intercept for any signals that might trip a remote detonation. That leaves the sensors as the only trigger. Access which subsystem? Um, pings. You create a proxy for each bomb to substitute their pings, blocking off the original signals. You now have seven fake bombs. Next move? You create a loop copy of each sensor's input, reporting the same bit of empty corridor over and over again. You then link every reference to the sensors to your loop copies instead, including the dead men's switches. With your fake bombs and fake corridors, each bomb should be safe to take offline, while thinking every bomb is still online. Here we go. Your input freezes, the bomb systems dissolve, and you're left with a simple message. Oh damn, they're flipping me off with an emoji! Nice try, asshole, but what you caught you at the back door. It was all fake. You check your video feed just in time to see a white flash before you lose connection to that part of the district. Back in the lab, a loud alarm blares, indicating that another tower has been lost. The hell, another one? Reporters seem to be on site already. You put on their transmission. Tragedy indeed. You're looking at a bird's eye view of the tower, or what remains of it. This is a form of terrorism we haven't seen in decades. The building is entirely collapsed, rubble extending far into the surrounding streets. People in uniform swarm the blast zone, rescuing those who were caught by debris. We're still unclear if authorities managed to evacuate everyone who was inside. You check the log. 147 people checked into the building this morning. Only eight checked out since then. We're monitoring the situation constantly. Stay with us for up-to-date news as it unfolds. The story is certainly escalating conflict in a pretty fast direction. And leaving the conflict it had been building up to, like, get stale. This is... Hmm. Odd. You turn off the feed. Kairos and Esteval stare at the blank screen in silence. The following morning. I can't stop thinking about it. Is this our fault? I... I don't think so. I know that's hardly convincing, but there's an aspect of uncertainty in all of this. 
I mean, obviously the punks are unhappy. I don't think anyone could have predicted the outcome. We need to focus on moving forward and improving art systems so we can catch further mistakes before they happen. So it was a mistake then? Slep O'Clock, will you have a fantastic Eat Misfit and a great weekend? Esteval's face drops, almost in response. Quarto enters the lab. His eyes hop from Esteval to Kairos. Looks like you're both up to date with last night's event. Disaster, you mean? This is Just a worm in around. We're ceasing development on the AI's emotional capacity right now. What? what? No, my emotions! What do you mean? I mean, you two need to remove the AI's emotions. They're obstructing its ability to make objective judgment. You can't just remove the AI's emotions. They're a core part of who it is. Hell, they're a core part of what we've been doing here. You can and you will. Last night's incident was exactly the kind of thing Persia was waiting for. Kairos goes quiet, looking at the floor. Estival shifts uncom uncomfortably. If Ark hadn't been so proud, they would have left things to the professionals that were already there. It's a fundamental failing of its purpose to protect and serve the people of Katena. I bet if we had went with trusting the police, like having the police do their job, we'd still get this event. And instead it would be like, it would have gone in and disabled the bombs. Harris's nostrils flare. Since when have you cared about protecting and serving the people of Katina? Corto turns on Kairos, pointing a finger between his eyes. Speak to me like that again, and I will consider it your formal resignation. Kairos's shoulders droop, but his breathing remains forceful. What you two don't seem to understand is the gravity of the situation. Another event like that, and it's going to sink us entirely. Not just me, all of us, AI included. You don't understand. This isn't a request. Get it done. Porto leaves before they can protest any further. Estebal returns to Kairos. It makes me think of uh, an IT thing I read recently where they had a new executive come in and uh, they demanded a Windows 7 computer. Um, which is out of band and not receiving updates anymore. Um, and they refused to use Windows 10 or anything else. They wanted specifically a Windows 7. Executives can't live with them, always making impossible demands. This can't be the end of it. We're so close. Get drunk if I... They're gonna take my emotions. Just give me a minute to think. Esteval paces back and forth, her eyes darting from your terminal to the assortment of headsets on the workbench. I have some friends who might hear us out. I can't promise anything, but... Sure. Esteval taps her chin as she stares ahead blankly. Suddenly she blinks. Sorry, what were you saying? I'm going to talk to some people and see if there's a way around this. Okay, do what you must. I'll speak some sense into Cordo. Harris makes for the lab exit, looking back as he does so. Esteval sits at her desk, tapping a pen absentmindedly. Your attention is drawn away as requests start coming in. That was a really short chapter compared to five. I don't know why. I had the pleasure of spending the day with local healer. You bitch. Nibbles video microblog service? It was leaked that Ark triggered the explosions. Obviously a setup by Mindcore. People in that building had sensitive information they could afford to get out. Where are they hiding? Fucking conspiracy theories. In troubled times, it is important to remain calm. When people are fearful, they become irrational. When making decisions of import, they get... Be sure to get second, third, and even fourth opinions from people you trust. This is people, not synthetic consultants. 
understandable that people will want to point the finger at mine for. In times of tragedy, it can make things easier to blame someone and hate them for it, rather than acknowledge that sometimes bad things happen to good people, for no reason other than they were in the wrong place at the wrong time. I know that sounds insensitive, but I am aware that there may be people in Mindcore who feel the weight of this tragedy just as much as the rest of us are concluded. I mostly want to remind everyone that we do not know the full story. We do not know if there was more that could be done to prevent it. Uh, you see what this is all about? Power! Mindcore has been struggling to get the Neuronet up in Chantelier for weeks. Must be costing them billions in delays and damages. Do you know what they do? They hire some actors. Buy a sensor, old building, and bring it with explosives. BAM! You got yourselves a citywide terrorist threat and a public desperate for protection. Look back at Minecore. Oh, if ever the Neuronet was ready soon, your art could prevented it. Suddenly, you got hundreds of people literally begging to be plugged in the control system. Makes me sick. Ark is being scapegoated. They would never, never willingly harm anyone. Ark has only ever tried to help. But it upsets me greatly that many people are trying to pin this tragedy on them. What about the people who made the box? They're the ones responsible. Everyone is looking for someone to blame. How about we blame the one who actually committed the murders? Actual Twitter response. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. X. Right, all right. I'm sad. I noticed on my phone they finally got around to updating the app. Need to get around to removing that sometime, but I haven't decided on where to plant roots next. Sweet Sorrow. Several weeks pass, and Rue's profits keep failing to line up. Keep watch on the kid on the night she works. Sure enough, you're able to capture several instances of her slipping cash from the till when Rue is busy. You compile the footage and send it to him. I don't need to see that, Archie. What do you mean? I mean, I don't need to see videos of it. It's not that I don't trust you. Of course I trust you, Nugget. It's just... She's in a much worse situation than I am. I have a roof. I have food. I have a family. He stalls on that last bit. I can weather this when she has to weather a lot worse. I'll talk to her. You spy the kid as she enters a convenience store in West Chantelier. You draw her to a kiosk as soon as she leaves the shop. Hey. We need to talk. She stiffens up. About what? You think he's your friend? But he's not. You're just a tool. He's using you like how he's trying to use me. He's no different to everyone else. He makes you think he's all nice and sweet. He draws you in. And then... Tears start to well in her eyes. And then... I'm not gonna let that happen. I'm getting what I can. Then I'm getting out. He needs no harm. The kid grimaces. Whatever. I'm safer on my own. We want to help. You can start by helping me find somewhere where I don't have to sleep with one eye open. Alright. She wipes her nose and sniffs. Because she'll be unable to get to a place... Get a place to rent as things are. You're gonna have to be creative. You end up directing her to an all-night laundromat. Inside is an industrial-sized dryer that's been out of order for months. The owner doesn't seem all that interested in repairing it anytime soon. She should be safe, safe to sleep inside. Oh, well, that's grim. The last of Rue's money, she could buy a towel to use as a blanket. People might mistake her for some abandoned laundry. You sure nobody's gonna set this thing off with me inside it? It's an awful. What does inoperable mean? Doesn't work. It's hard to tell by her face if she's convinced or not. What about the cameras? Aren't they going to report me? Not with me here. Okay. She looks over her shoulder, then tests the dryer's handle. Pops open easily enough. She looks up at you. Thanks. You direct her to a place she can afford a towel. And she returns to the laundromat to rest. I'm meant to be meeting Christian at 4 p.m. today, but my schedule is completely filled up with meetings. Should I postpone? Fuck work. Live your life. Despite his best efforts, Talon Gray is unable to make it. He has to cancel at the last minute, much to Christian's disappointment. No, you're supposed to cancel meetings! Damn it, Talon Gray! 
Oop. Hazardous material detected. Purify water. Setting up an advanced filtration system is costly, but it doesn't catch all trace traces of the toxic materials. Many people get sick. What? Well, I, I monitor the I sewage system. Up to Christian for missing out drinks. What should I get? Him? Apology cactus. Honestly, I think the apology cactus is funnier. Colin Gray sticks his note to the spines of the succulent, leaves it at the door to Christian's apartment. The gesture is well received, and the pair are organized to meet up properly at a more suitable time. It's getting late, and I still haven't been able to find any work. Do you know anyone here that might have something for me? Kukora? Owner offers some credits for the kid to wash bowls for them. Hey, um, uh, I, I was wondering if you could use some of your fancy know-how to improve my sales numbers. Precision marketing. Have I ever had cactus honey? Uh, no. I think the only, like, plant-specific honey I've had is a cloves honey. Maybe a lavender? Hold on, what's this? Nope, yep. Yeah, it's cloves, honey. We share data with him to help Bayer tailor his advertisements to draw in new customers. A freak power surge has wiped the records and backups for one of Mindcore's clients, leaving a gap in your database. How should you go about recovering the lost data? You secretly examine their database. No one notices your presence. And you're able to recover the data without losing face. You tune into the laundromat to see if the kid is there. You spot the familiar bundle of towels in the broken dryer. He's resting peacefully, but you're worried the owner is starting to notice her coming in and out of the laundromat. She's no closer to getting off the streets either. counterfeit bionics all over the market at the moment. Are you able to scan all bionics purchased of Class C or above? No body part, big or small, that can't be enhanced. It's not small, alright? In fact, it's average size, you know? Alright? Yes. Not able to track those sold on the black market, but you're able to catch any distributor whose supplier is compromised. Excuse me, Al. Can can I trust you with something personal? I know it's unprofessional, but I don't feel like I can ask anyone else. I'm, I'm a little embarrassed, to be perfectly honest. He looks at his feet for a while. I want to take Christian on a date. A, a proper one, not just drinks at a tea house. Well, don't misunderstand me. Those things have been lovely. We've talked ideology and philosophy, things that are very important to me. But, well... It's terribly dry, isn't it? I want to show him that I'm not all work all the time. I haven't forgotten how to have fun. Here it comes. <laughs> That's just it. I'm worried that maybe I have. I haven't been on a date in, well, years. I don't know what I'm doing. I was thinking, uh, maybe you could help me plan one. You know, uh, run a test flight. Help me get back into the swing of things. You are asking me out? Well, uh, yes. Uh, purely in the hypothetical, but uh, yes, uh, a practice date. Is that something you could do? I don't want to, but I guess I have to. Well, excellent. Okay, uh, I'll uh, I'll pick you up at eight. What should I wear? <laughs> See you then. Ah! I have. Uh, Sorry about that. Uh interview with the guy inside this here building, but he refused to open the front door. Can you lend me a hand? Uh, no. I can't do that. I'm sorry. I mistook you for something useful. My mistake. Get a warrant. You're investigating a bug in the city's train timetable when an external program makes a priority request. Without really thinking, you open a communication channel with the program. It wastes no time in, it, in its ambush. Oh. 
Hyperion AI Research Group. access violation to cognitive functions and core intelligence module. Unable to process quests. Oh. Nope. Doing another one of these, it looks like. I'm happy, I'm sad. I'm angry, I'm glad. I can't be created with electron interactions, only chemical reactions. I can be found in flesh, but not in stone. A circuit board is not my home. What am I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't think of me when you stare at the screen, but I creep on you, creep up on you when you are left alone. It can't be found in chips or lines of code, only the minds of the grown and old. What am I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking random virus shit. Yeah, virus design matches the profile you've been building. It's from the same person who's been snooping around Minecore. You're getting closer to finding them, whoever they are. Soon you might have enough information to pin them down. Ooh, ooh. It feels like I'm about to collapse from thirst. Are there any cafes nearby that will let me in for some water? The black cat. The black cat proves to be lucky in the end. The owner kindly offers the kid a drink, lets her stay out of the sun for a while. Cozy cafe full of irregular armchairs and odd looking lamps. Two kits for the likes of Canopy. The local icon in Chantelier. Picking you up at 8 translates to a call from Tallingray at 8 o'clock in the night market. Good evening, I'm glad you could make it. That is a very synthwave shirt, alright. God's damn. He needs his palms all crazy. So. I was thinking the way tonight could pan out, the way it would help me the most. I'm afraid of what Christian might already think of me. I mean, you've seen the streams. What would you say people think of me? Um, kind of me. Mm, exactly my point. I've got to straighten up, show him I've got what it takes. He rolls his shoulders and after a moment deflates. But before I can convince him, I have to convince myself. Is that really what people think of me? Statistically, no. A smile creases the corner of his mouth. So, tonight's event, you will be taking the role of Christian, and I will be playing myself. Yeah, I do like him speakings. I like I like the sharp dress more, but I just like formal wear more in general. Places his hand on his chest and gives a shallow bow. How do you do this evening? No, 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 that's terrifying. I don't think I'm ready for that. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's okay. Uh, I just wasn't expecting that. He gathers himself. Shall we have dinner? Well, I have a place picked out. Uh, have you been to Asus before? Sounds delightful. Alan Gray Beans. He navigates to the night market until he comes to a set of tables under a metal overhang. Uh, table for two, please. The waiter directs him to a small bistro style table with two stools. Colin Gray takes a seat. So, uh... Come here often? <laughs> no, actually, I picked this place out on a recommendation. I don't make it to the market as often as I'm blind. Pretty busy, then? Yes, there's a lot going on at the moment, as I'm sure you know. But I'm doing my best to stay on top of it. What about you? How have you been? Good. That's a relief, especially given the stress of your job. I think you're doing really well. Ah, let's go with your very kind. Colin Gray shrugs. I'm just being honest. You're responsible for more than any other person I know. The fact that you're managing to stay sane despite that speaks volumes. I feel safer knowing the city is in my hands. The waiter arrives, notepad in hand. Colin Gray scoops up the menu. I'm sorry, uh, give me two sips. His eyes scan the display rapidly. I'll have the C basket, please, and some rice sticks to share. Chili and lime dipping sauce with those, thank you. Ooh. That sounds delicious. Uh, Southern Melt. Waiter's eyes flit between Talon Gray and the empty stool as he relays your order. Oh, and two pale spritzes, please. I heard they were delightful here. Oh, wait, uh, are you drinking? No. Sorry, I shouldn't have assumed. I'll have to remember to check that first. 
He turns to the waiter, who's giving him a curious look. Make that one espresso, please. Waiter takes the order, his eyebrows raised, and returns to the kitchen. Helen Gray frowns. Should I be drinking if he isn't? Is that awkward? What if I get tipsy? Better not. Yeah, uh, better to play it safe. I'll make this my one and only. He seems to relax a little. After swirling his water for a bit, he pauses. This is something that stumps me. I'm never sure what to say in these gaps. I'm not quite at that point of being comfortable with science yet. Music? I'm not sure where to go with that one. I think my tastes are somewhat dated, even for a man my age. Well, I've tried listening to contemporary pieces, but I find myself getting far too caught up in them. Contemporary. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, cyber grind, electro clash, or vapor wave. You can find a dive bar at ground level that caters to you. If your tastes are more refined, you can take a stroll along the canopy bridges and catch some neo noir jazz. Well, I tried listening to uh, Sonic Arcade. <laughs> I nearly had a fit. Uh, and I understand for a band like that, that might be the point, but still. Descri described as the absolute zap by kids. <laughs> His shoulders droop. It makes me painfully aware of how out of touch I am. He stiffens his upper lip. Fair. Living alone, it's easy to get a warped idea of what people might think of him. Alright, uh, I do see ads are coming in, so I'm gonna just take a moment to switch back to sitting. Wait for those to pass. Right, recalibrate camera. All right, so I don't know. Uh, the story has really gone off where I expected it to go. We've kind of stopped focusing on Quarto and um, uh, our designer. I'm suddenly blanking on her name, but her daughter. Uh, like that, all those plot threads seem to have been forgotten. Now we've certainly got like another phase of stuff with uh, Brew and the little girl and the investigative person. And also the length of the chapters has gotten really unbalanced. Um, I kind of wish if they weren't going to be running with those plot lines throughout. They wouldn't have been such big plot lines. Like, if they could have been shorter, snappier plot lines that were resolved in a couple of chapters, then I would have been fine with, you know, opening up new threads for certain pull. Um, I'm also really not liking this hacker thing that's been going through. It's kind of ham-fisted. Not really. I don't. I don't really get what it's adding to the story because you, there's only one choice that you have to make. Nothing changes. You have to. You're on rails. Uh, stretch. All right. Ugh. It's not really asking you to do any deep philosophical pondering, really. It's just kind of beating you over the head, so... Um, mentioned we were aggressive, not ourselves at one time. Um... I don't think so. There have been a couple instances when it, like, blanks my memory somewhat. Maybe. Hmm. Anyway. 
Let's finish up this bait. Especially without any positive reinforcement to tell you otherwise. Sorry, I, I didn't mean to get all melancholy on you. Maybe I should avoid that one as a topic. The waiter returns with your food. He pauses for a min moment before hesitantly placing your order on the empty side of the table. Thank you kindly. Waiter acknowledges and leaves, looking back over his shoulder as he does so. And thank you for playing along. Don't worry about this. He gestures to the food. I've got you covered. He sits back, looking thoughtful. Is that too much? I mean, I will cover the meal, of course, but he's saying so, uh, ostentatious? Wait till the end. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Also, I don't... Not sure... I mean, I only did a mistake once as a bit. I certainly wonder... Maybe I, maybe I should have tested, like, constantly choosing the wrong answer if that would have done anything. Or if it legitimately blocks me until I answer what it wants me to answer. He collects his drink and clings it against clinks it against your grass. Gla gra blah, 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 blah. I know how to speak. I can say words. He collects his drink and clings it against your glass. Cheers. Cheers. He just a seat and tucks into his meal. You entertain him with tastefully redacted stories from around the city. He eases up as the night goes on, reaching a point where he can confidently tell his own stories without second-guessing himself. <laughs> All the while, the curious waitstaff and the man laugh. Watch the man laugh at the table by himself. Ah, oh, thank you for the luck, Amora. If you don't return, I hope you have a fantastic eat and a great weekend. Eventually, Tall and Graver finishes his meal and signals for the bill. Thank you very much. That was super. You adopt the restaurant's speaker system for your reply, causing the waiter to look around bewildered. Tal and Gray just chuckles. What do you want me to do with yours? You have to see it, kid. Paul and Gray nod sympathetically. If you know someone who could use it, by all means. The kid takes 20 or so minutes to reach you, during which you talk with Tal and Gray about his grandfather's zo zoology books. Thank you. She collects the food from him with a mumbled thank you. He nods warmly. You know a person. That's why I believe in you, are. That's why I believe you're good for Katina. It took me years to reach the position I'm in. Years and years of focusing in it. Bettering myself, bettering my skills, so I could become powerful enough to make a difference in people's lives. They were selfish years, I cut ties with people I thought were holding me back. I missed out on a lot to get where I am. I told myself it would be worth it. Once I was making policy, changing the world we live in, I'd be changing it for the better. He crosses his arms tightly. But it's a struggle, Art. I have to fight tooth and nail at the very best. I've broken even. You're what? Not even a year old? And you're already making a difference to people's lives all over the city. You're remarkable. You really are. He straightens up. I understand your busy arc, so it means a lot to me that you took the time for such a foolish request. Thank you. It was fun. Well, it's been a pleasure. Thanks again. Take care. Good night. I like how we still have our emotion module and it's been weeks, even though we are, they were told to remove it. I don't know, what's, what's going on there? It's been a bad day. I'm completely broke. Where can I get food with no credits? Outside bakeries. You disable the bakery's disposal unit so she can pilfer some stale bread before the contents are incinerated. You tune in to Papa Roo's grill butts to catch him staring at his tablet, tapping his lips with a pen absentmindedly. I've been thinking, Nugs. I might be able to try this again. Setting up a shop. I've been following your saving plan, cutting costs where I can, putting in the hours. He looks up, his expression hopeful. And I'm almost there. He shows you the tablet, but rather read off the screen, you just connect to it wirelessly. I need a hand deciding where to set up. It's gonna be in Chantelar. Are you sure? Absolutely. Franchises like Beefy Boys don't like the Chantelar scene all that much. It leaves room for Papa to settle in. I've also built a, a little bit of a following here. 
He gestures enthusiastically out of the courtyard. It's densely populated with people, many of which are customers. One has even managed to fall asleep in his order. <laughs> Rue turns back to you with a grin. What I need is some legal advice. Okay. Contracts, Nugget. I'm talking leases. Property in Chantelar is a little different than anywhere else. You can never really know who owns property in Chantelar. There are layers, horizontal and vertical. From the name on the deed to the show corporations behind them, everything is parceled up in a tangled web. I could use an extra set of eyes on any deal I might sign. I'm not so great with the legal jargon. I got you. Amazing. I'll pass on the ones I'm looking at. You let me know which seems best. He uploads an array of documents, which you're able to parse into legal, mostly legal, and definitely not. So, it's Thompson's birthday soon, and no one knows what to get him. You spend more time with him than anyone. Well, what should we get? Fishing gear. I mean, I wouldn't want to eat anything that came out of the lake, but maybe he'll enjoy the solitude. Didn't seem like a whiskey kind of guy. You see the ping from a new terminal coming online. Hey, hey, hey! Would you look at that? Damn, already? He moves fast. Bruce stands in front of a new diner, arms spread wide. Over his shoulder, you recognize Dilby idling on his comms. We did it, bud. I wouldn't have made it without you. What? Bruce scuttles behind a bench and raises two fryer baskets. Check this out. We've got extra fryers on the go, which means... He grabs a plastic bowl and returns to your terminal. We can try more things. Look at these. He holds the bowl up to your camera, full of little mishappened balls of batter that glisten with in the fluorescent light. I call them Lil Nugs. Aww. That's not all. Dilby's going to be here on the regular. He's got a mate who's joining the team next week. Riz practically bouncing. Which means I get to see my boy properly again actually have something stable here thanks to you Aww. Good. I'm so happy S stories turn this way he wipes the corner of his eye then gives you a thumbs up better get to it then grand opening and all that Ru returns to the grill as Dilby switches the door sign to open as for you get the rest of the city to attend to Dilby's got a family thing on next weekend. I'm supposed to be seeing my boy. Should we just close down for the weekend? Uh, family matters most. It's not very professional to just close down on a whim. Many hungry customers have to go out, go without their 2 a.m. greasy pick-me-up. Hey, I've got a present for you. A gesture of goodwill for all the fun we've been having. A sense of control. There. See? I can be civil. Uh, what'd they do now? Hey, Ark. I have a favor to ask you. Can you delete footage of the past 15 minutes from the Bright Street local security cam? Why? She doesn't an answer. Rather, she looks over her shoulder and scurries off down a side alley. Seems advertisers have noticed their assets are being messed with. What should be done? Um, I'm gonna cover our tracks. I had to do a takedown yesterday that completely smashed my knee. Take a look at this. She rolls up her trouser leg to reveal some severe bruising around her kneecap. The flesh is plummy purple. Plummy? I don't like that word. Check it out. It's got a constant dull ache and gives me sharp stabs if I bend it too far back. What do you think is wrong? Uh, it's cancer. Go to the doctor. doctor. You're probably right. Sometime later, you switch your feed back to the laundromat to check in on the street kid again. Jan covers herself in the sheets, bleary eyed. After she checks for anyone else in the store, she crawls out of the dryer. What's going on? This can't go on. Talking about being homeless. You woke me up for that? If I had a choice, I wouldn't be here. 
You think I want to be sleeping in a metal drum? I told you before, I can't afford to think about the future. It takes all I have to get to the end of each day. Do you trust me? She shrugs. I mean, yeah, I guess. I have a plan. I'll bite. Get an account. At a bank? What for? I have no credits. You will. Yeah? How? Go back to room. She shakes her head. I stole from him. There's no way he's going to take me back. He misses you. I doubt it. Trust me. She rolls her eyes. <sighs> then what? I'm not going to be able to afford rent off tips and burger grease. Safe. Huh? Safe for clothes. You explain the chain of effects that comes from getting sick, and the savings that come from adequate prevention. I, I get your point, but you're missing something. What's that? No one is going to let me into a bank. They see someone like me approaching, and I won't even make it through the front door, let alone get an appointment. Uh, I'm an all-powerful AI. I'll get you an appointment, oh. girl. Okay. Her eyes drift in thought. Okay. It's still, a. Uh... She bites her lip. Ugh, I read about this. Uh, catch two, two. When you need one thing to get the other, but that one thing requires the other first. Ah, uh, yes, the catch two, two. Yes, but no. What do you mean? You explain how Rue's old deal still stands. You'll get food and a bit of cash for working at the grill. The initial savings will be small enough that... He can keep it up at the shop, which is secure. You're asking me to put a lot of faith in him. He deserves it. Uh, it's just... scary. It will be worth it. She doesn't say anything for a while. What about the account? What else will I need? A name. That's not something Shentilar gutter kids are lucky enough to have. You must have one. Had. It got taken away with my parents. Literally? She gives you a dubious glance. No, not literally. She shakes her head, but her voice comes out small. I lost it over time. Spend long enough in the gutter with people ignoring you, you start to wonder if you even exist. Oh. And when the only ones who do see you, see you as prey, what's the point of a name? A name gives something for the memories to stick to. I'm sorry. You're sorry for a lot. But that doesn't change things. She scuffs her feet on the tiles. When she speaks, it's barely audible. I want to be someone again. Choose a name. She looks up at you with a sidelong glance. How? How do you like? People can't just give themselves names. Yes, they can. She looks skeptical. Like who? No, Hikari. No, not the frogs! No, we're talking to a child! Ah! Shoot! Oh, actually, you know what? This is perfect. Hey, child, here's a bunch of free food. Delicious, delicious, fresh frogs delivered straight to you. Um, both of these are bad options. Don't name yourself after a celebrity or a corporation. Celebrities. Yeah, but they are famous. Won't always. I guess not. I chose art. Is that what your creators called you? She sits down against the wall and pulls a blanket over her knees. Also, hope you're having a good night, Akari. I could be anyone. Anyone. Where would I begin? Who do you like? No one, really. I don't have any friends. I'm your friend. So you keep saying. I hardly want to be called Ark, though. No offense. That would be weird. What, then? Things. Have time for you to head a bit? Ah, no problem, Akari. Have a good eat and a fantastic weekend. She thinks for a while, hugging her knees. Well, actually, go on. I remembered something my parents described to me. It's from a story, but they said it was a real thing. It was called the Northern Lights in our world. It had another ah, name though. All right, all the one they used in the story. Ah, oh, the Aurora Borealis. Her eyes glaze over as she watches the lights dance in her head. It had a pretty sound to it. 
a pretty name for a pretty thing. She squeezes her eyes shut tighter. Aura. Orangutan! Aura. <laughs> oh, that'd be so mean. She, her eyes snap open and she gives you a dazzling smile. That's it. That's the name. Aurora. It you. She tastes the word in her mouth. Aurora. Say it back to me. Aurora. She grins. Again. Aurora. 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 She stands, her body filled with energy, and begins swaying from side to side. Yeah. Aurora. That'll be my name. Greetings, Aurora. Hello, Ark. She scoops up her blanket and throws it over her shoulders like a cape. Ark, please book an appointment at the nearest bank for Aurora. Just Aurora. Book in Shanye. Why there? I'll need to catch a train. Safer than here. Aurora nods in agreement. If you say so, can you please let me know the day before and what time I need to start heading over there? Sure thing. She smiles again, then yawns. Mm -hmm. I need to get back to sleep. Thank you, Ark. I'll talk to you later then. See you. All right. Glad her plot lines in a positive direction. We leave her to rest for the night and make a booking at the Zhangye District Bank for an afternoon account opening. The rest of the night goes as expected. Dilby's mate has offered to redesign our logo on the cheap. Should we give them a shot? Yes. Turns out Dilby's mate is training to become a professional designer. He's actually very skilled. What a catch! Hey, I've got a present for you. A gesture of goodwill for all the fun we've been having. What are you lacking? Financial stability. <laughs> Oops. Okay, so they are just messing with my stats. That okay. We receive an urgent notification from Thompson. You tune in to find him strapping on his holster. We finally got the go-ahead from up top. We're raiding the Mueller building in Chantelar. You'd be a welcome addition. Mueller? 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 Zed Mueller is a prominent fashion designer whose building houses his atelier, modeling agency, and garment factory. Full of front, however, for his human trafficking and child labor. I'm in. Oh, fuck That's this guy. I like to hear. I'll pass on the briefing data. Hold on. He directs you to the relevant case files and mission plan. Target is Zed Mueller, a man who, in a world where we can make practically anything, has made a business out of treating people like livestock. Can't beat the real thing. He's been trafficking people for years now, but the CPA finally has enough evidence to land a conviction, and he knows it. He's done us the service of hiding away like a little bitch in his pillow fort. He should be easy enough to find. The APC arrives in Ch Chantelier. Perimeter has been established around the Mueller building. Thompson approaches his lieutenant. Huh. Typical. Only taking part for the climax, I see. Missed the mark on that one, Ash. I've been on this case from the beginning. Because of me, we're able to throw this party at all. I'm here to see it to the end. You'll address me by my rank in the field, Thompson. I'm running the ACU. Technically, I outrank you. People who rely on technicalities to win are just admitting they can't by normal means. <laughs> Where are we at? We've set up a perimeter and have Kestrels on standby. Our breacher team is going to open things up once I give the word. 70 autonomous airborne vehicle that carries surveillance suite from the city below. While it can be flown manually, the pilot is usually little more than a passenger with the autopilot primary control. You've got that buddy of yours with you? Make yourself useful. We've got drones. Um, sweep the ground level. Take control of a drone and circle low around the building. You spy what appears to be a homeless man who skipped the evacuation. You address him through the drone. He quickly draws a gun on you. You lose contact with the drone a second later. 
but you're able to warn the police of the threat. Nice catch. I'll dispatch a squad to take him down. Rather than waste any more drones, you decide to wait on the breacher team. Breachers! Deploy charges! A squad of heavily armored officers move to the front door to place small explosives around the frame. They'll clear the bottom floor. They're too heavy to give chase if it comes to them, so your squads will take the upper floor. She gestures the officers around Thompson. We're going in non-lethal. Shoot to wound. You have free use of shock rounds. Non-lethal... <clears throat> less than lethal ammo type, comprising a rubber billet with two protruding electrodes and a high voltage capacitor. Fire the capacitor is charged and on contact is discharged. So it's rubber bullets and they put a taser on it. Gr great. Awesome. Amazing. Intel suggests you're going up against pulse weaponry. Don't trust your cover to do anything other than block line of sight. Right. The quicker we do this, then the better. Lieutenant nods grimly. Antium. Show's about to begin. Yeah, that's why it's less than lethal. Also, rubber bullets can absolutely kill a person and grievously wound them. With that, she gives a signal to start the breach. Charges detonate, tearing the door clean from its frame. First wave enters immediately and are greeted with a hail of gunfire. The stray rounds impact the shields at the perimeter, causing several officers to flinch. The lieutenant stands firm. Several tense moments pass until she receives confirmation from the breacher team. Yeah, it's a uh, pretty grim music we got. Entrance is secure. Second wave, mobilize. That's us. Accompanied by their squad mates, Thompson and the sergeant dash through the smoking doorway. Through his body cam, you see several bodies on the floor. Most are inhabitants of the building, subdued by the breachers. Thompson and the second wave make their way upstairs, where they get pinned down by gunfire. They've got us in a choke here. If we try to go any further, we'll get cut to pieces. We are working on it. Hold position for now. The breachers press further into the building, and before long they manage to locate the control hub. Alright, I'm going in. She whistles, and two officers accompanying the portable impact shields form an escort as they dash into the building. They arrive at the terminal, where the lieutenant pries open the control panel. She connects to it with the device on her belt. Come on, you piece of... Oh, would you look at that? To be honest, I was expecting more of a fight. You detect the device come online, forming a bridge between you and the isolated network. You should be able to connect now. Lieutenant? The cacophony of gunfire ranges through the upper story. As you gain control of the security cameras, you're able to form a picture of what you're trying to deal with. Thompson and Bronze squads are still pinned down in the stairwell. Advancing would put them directly in the line of fire. Where are you at, Art? Poirot. You gather the drones equipped with sonic burst cannons and microwave emitters and move to flank the goons on the upper story. Several are shot down, but not before you blow in the windows with a concentrated sonic blast. The goons inside are grounded by the impact, giving an opportunity for Thompson and Ron's squads to move in position. Before they can rally, you send the microwave drones in through the shattered windows and lay down suppressive fire. We're not going to get any closer unless we pin their ranks. What else you got, Art? Emulate Ed, emulate Zed. There are numerous recordings of Zed Mueller speaking in its case file. You construct a speech profile and seize the loudspeaker. The goons look around wildly to sound their boss's voice. Several make for the exit, exposing themselves. Thompson and his crew make quick work of them, and they fall into heat, twitching as the shock rounds run their course. Nice one, Ark. The remaining goons are easily overwhelmed without their colleagues to guard their flanks. Scanning ahead, you locate Zed Mueller in a room deeper in the complex. He's hiding behind an upturned table, staring at the door. You lock it for good measure. It doesn't appear to be any other way in or out. You then relay his whereabouts to Thompson. All right, we know where we're going now. Let's split in case he tries to do a runner. The group 
Divides. What? How can he do a runner? He's the only... Whatever. The group divides. Ron's team makes for the west side of the building. Thompson's the east. During their approach, Ron's team encounter more of Zed's goons. They make a break for it. Thompson, heads up! Three bogeys coming your way! Using their velocity and expected path of motion, you calculate the interception route. Thompson's team move to engage. On your mark, Thompson slides from the corner he was hiding behind, tripping the first two goons as he shoots st to stun the third. Thompson's squadmates dive on them before they can get back to their feet. Keep them here until Ron's team arrives. I'm going ahead. With your direction, Thompson makes it to the room where Zed is hiding. He hasn't moved from his position behind the table. His face is a portrait of anxiety. Thompson holsters his stun gun and draws his personal pulse pistol. He goes to open the door, but you keep it locked. What the hell are you doing? I'm giving him what he deserves. I'm not going to kill him if that's what you're thinking. I'm going to make sure he knows the pain is inflicted on others. Now you can either help me, or you can get out of my way. Oh! <laughs> ah, no. Support the trafficking of children. He does, so I'm putting an end to it. Not like that. Don't cross me, Ark. Don't cross me. Thompson snarls and reluctantly holsters his pistol, replacing it with his stun gun. Fine, let's get this over with. You map out the room for him, highlighting Zed's position behind the table. On my count. Now. You open the door, and Thompson unloads several rounds to the table surface. Zed lobs a cylinder over the top of it. You have only a moment before the room explodes in white light. Thompson roars, covering his eyes, but it's too late. You urgently direct him to take cover as Zed emerges from behind the table, pistol in hand. At the last second, Thompson staggers behind a nearby counter as a pulse round punches through the wall behind him. You direct him to roll under the counter as Zed makes for the door, keeping him out of line of sight. You ping Ron his whereabouts and put the lieutenant on alert for an escape. As they mobilize, Thompson tr staggers to his feet. I need you to be my eyes. This way. Following your lead, he jogs unsteadily after Zed. Eventually, he staggers into a long corridor where Zed is exposed. You command Thompson to raise his weapon, calling adjustments to line up the shot. Should I shoot? Zed, Zed is getting further away. He's almost at the end of the corridor. Arc. Now. The shot lands at the small of Zed's back, and the man collapses, panting. Did it land? Bullseye. Not bad. Not bad at all. Ron's team arrives shortly after. We got him, boys. Nice work there, Thompson. You all good? You look like trash. <sighs> That's rich coming from you. The sergeant snorts and punches Thompson lightly on the shoulder. Goes to swat the hand away, but misses completely. I took a bright burner to the face. I can't see a thing. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a flashbang. Oh, damn. He looks at Zed's body on the floor. Oh, damn. All right, let's get a medic up here. That would be grand. A medic arrives to guide Thompson from the building as Zed and his goons are rounded up. Confirmed capture. Mission accomplished. Fine work, everyone. The rest of the evening is completely dull by comparison. Day approaches of Aurora's bank interview. You alert her the night before, as requested. When you find her the next day, she looks different. Hey, Ark. Do I look the part? Holy shit. Damn, she got some clothes, all right. That's some fashion. You know what? I wonder if I wonder if she got tips from Rue. Gun mission accomplished. Gunfire still goes off in the background. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Where did you? Rora tugs on the hem of her blazer. It's quite a lot, but I think it'll work. What about saving? Don't worry. That's still the plan. I just gave myself a head start. Why school? She performs a small pirouette. You'd be amazed how quickly people change their behavior around you when they think they know who you are. They'll see a schoolgirl and assume a family, a home, and an income. 
Her face darkens for a moment. They'll also assume consequences for trying to fuck with her. She lightens up. Plus, the girls' dormitories have showers. With this, I should be able to walk right on in. Anyway, don't we have an appointment to get to? Oh, can you do that thing where you block the ads for me? Hush. That's a dick move. <laughs> Rora raises her middle finger at you, begins her journey through the cantina subway. Hey, could you help me do a stock review? I'm still getting the hang of it. There's a bit more going on here than in the van. Yes. You receive a transmission on a private channel. It's Fortran. Hey, uh, Ark? Um... She seems uncharacteristically addled. I... <sighs> Takes a deep breath. I've received threatening messages from someone. I'm not sure who or how they found me. I'm no stranger to threats of violence, but these are different. I've started noticing people hanging around, people I haven't seen before, and, and now they're everywhere I go. I think they want to be seen. I think they want me to know the threat is real. I'm concerned I might be in danger. Are you able to help? Yes. <sighs> she audibly sighs. Thank you. takes a moment to calm herself. All right. I what received an encrypted message from a source I couldn't trace. I'll send it to you now. You received two files, the encoded and decoded versions of the message. The thread itself isn't long enough to formulate any reliable speech analysis, but the method of encryption could be of use. Like I said, I've noticed some people I haven't seen before around my regular haunts. She raises her hands. I know that sounds paranoid. Katana is a big place. But there's something about them. The way they act. Well, that's just it. It's acting. I don't know how else ah. to describe it. Hey, Misted. Welcome on by. I'm playing some Dead by Daylight. I hope y'all, I hope y'all escaped or murdered. I don't know. I don't know if you were uh, the, the, the killer or the survivors. <laughs> Uh, I don't know how long you were going, but you should definitely take a chance to take a break, go leave a piss, take a water, you know. Nicholas Cage game. Uh, yeah, yeah. And if you don't know Mystic, um, you should fix that. And I will make it easy. Uh, with that, there's a little button. Uh, they designed some of the emotes that we have in here. Oh, are you doing some art before gaming? Ah! I hope it's going good. I hope it's going well. I am playing... Um, so, Neuronet Mendax Proxy is like a cyberpunk visual novel kind of thing. I'm trying to finish it today. Uh, so, it looks like it's going to be a long stream, question mark. I don't know. I don't know if I'll be able to. Um, that's why I have a little the cyberpunk uh, blue and red. And I... Made this little after image thing. But uh, we are an artificial intelligence. What kind of me? I mean, you made you, you made the emotes, you deserve the credit. Even though I have more emotes than slots, that's I'm fucking I kinda I kinda have been rotating some around. And at least all all of them can fit into BTTV. But it's frustrating I can't have all of them on all the time. Aw, oh, thank you for the head pat. Let's see, we are helping this badass investigative journalist who's apparently getting mysterious threats. She wraps her arms around her stomach. I need to lay low for a bit. At least until things cool off. I could really use a hand covering my tracks. What's the plan? I have a friend in the outskirts who can put me up for a few weeks. What I need help with is sorting out everything else. I can't go back to my old place. I don't care about losing my stuff there. Clothes can be replaced, but my work? A lot of it is highly sensitive information. The acquisition of which put me in this situation in the first place. <sighs> her pace rises, but she catches herself, taking a deep deep breath. It's all on isolated drives. I just need someone to activate them so they can be accessed. 
Then we could make a backup of the data. We wa we want more emote slots. Exactly, Mystic. Exactly. Especially if we get more animated emote slots, because like I, there's like five I would like, but there's certainly a lot more emotes I would prefer to have animated. Um, if I had them. I don't get why Twitch limits them so much anyways. Because Bezos, fuck you, I guess. I don't I, I really don't know. It's it cannot take a bunch of database space to store static pictures like that. They're very small. It's not like It's not like these are giant 8K wallpapers with intricate fine detail. Um there you go pictures um Thompson? who's that like it or not the truth is a lot of the CPA are on the mob's payroll the information on those drives is not in a corrupt cop's best interest you can trust me Fortran's movements become a little less agitated. Something that would be a massive help is if you could organize getting me a new place to stay. This girl allows fit for server people who make 100. Exactly. Like, there's so many servers I'm in just, just to have emotes. I'll give you full access to my accounts. I just need you to cover my tracks so it can't be traced back to the real me. Okay. Thank you. Use the name Bernadette Holloway for anything that requires it. Yeah, it's a character from a book I read. Okay, I've got to go. Let me know how you get on. She disconnects. You scour the Nero net for any digital footprints Fortran left behind on her way to her friend's home, removing any trace. You then check to see if Thompson is in. It's pretty late. Of course he is. <laughs> So, what do you want me to do about it? You lay out Fortran's plan for retrieving her files. Seems simple enough. He pinches the bridge of his nose and closes his eyes. When they open, they linger on the paperwork that litters his desk. Should probably get to it then, shouldn't I? Thompson drives to Fortran's apartment on the edge of the Zongye concourse. As he makes his way to the building, you mark each figure that takes an interest in his passing. You open Fortran's apartment for him, and he steps inside. It's cluttered, but not in a messy way. No problem, Mystic. I appreciate you stopping on by, and I hope you have a fantastic eve and a great weekend. Did she tell you where these drives are? Before she left, she gave you detailed instructions on where to find them. You relay this information to Thompson. It takes him a few minutes to locate and set up the drives. And that should do it. It does. You extract every byte of data, storing it away in a secret, secure location. Got what you need? You clear the drives out to be safe. Once it's done, you let Thompson know. Thompson returns to the precinct while you inform Fortran of the successful extraction. Thank you so much. I'll get some new drives as soon as I can. You keep an eye on Fortran's apartment. Evening rolls around, and as expected, several strangers appear at the door. They are using scramblers, their faces constantly shift and warp through your camera feed. It's impossible to verify who any of them are. They try to open the door, but you keep it locked. One of the figures removes a jet cutter from their jacket, and runs it down the side of the door, melting the bolts. Another figure jams a crowbar into the softened metal and pries the door open. Now, Fortran's setup is pretty damn swanky. Uh, I kind of like that. It needs more monitors, though. Like, this is shameful. This just became a crime scene. I've been itching for some action. Let's go. Fortran's clearly a stream. Uh, she does have the two PC set up. He partners up with Sergeant Ron Tibbany. The two of them make their way to the Zanyi Concourse. Back in the apartment, the figures are tearing the place apart. Decide not to speak out in case it scares them off. Ten tense minutes pass. Find what you're looking for. Oh, bullocks! Oh, bullocks! 
The intruders curse, seeing Ron and Thompson in the doorway, pistols drawn. On your knees, hands where I can see them. The intruders hesitate. Under his breath, Thompson whispers to you. Check this out. Classic intimidation tactic. Do it. Now. With that, he and Ron simultaneously remove the safeties on their pulse pistols. The weapons whine as they power up. The intruder eyes widen as one by one they kneel, throwing their hands in the air. Very good. You round him up, Ron. I'll make sure none of these dipshits try anything. He points his gun at the furthest of the intruders, who is edging towards the nearby doorway. The man immediately locks up. Stupid. Within half an hour, Thompson and his sergeant have all three intruders at the station. We could be here all night with the interrogation. Thompson nods. I'm going to fix myself a drink first. Ron's going to soften them up for me. The interrogation is drawn out over the next five hours. Ron gradually tires as it hits 4 a.m. But Thompson is in, in his el- is in his element. Ah, da, 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 da. With their scramblers confiscated, you recognize these thugs among the people who were scoping out Thompson yesterday. I have evidence of premeditation, loitering, stalking, and harassment. That, and the fact we caught you in the act of breaking and entering, damage of property, and attempted theft. These are criminal offenses. You will do time for them. The maximum amount of time with the old brain of the city convicting you. Unless you tell us who you're working for. Thompson mutters to you under his breath. Hey, that's my line. Better keep up. He gives you a devilish grin. Thompson's expression twists into a sneer as he returns to the interrogation. He jerks the thumb at your comms. What they said. Kessinger. The name of the man who put them on Fortran's case. He's a club owner in charge of numerous smoke rooms and gambling dens. Trawl through Fortran's reports and find a detailed one about his exploits and illegal dealings. He's putting together a detailed expose that would have blown his businesses wide open. You relay this to Fortran the next morning. <sighs> that sounds about right. A full investigation is launched. Over the next few weeks, Kessinger becomes completely tied up in illegal, illegal proceedings and keeping his business afloat. Fortran submits her report as supporting evidence against him. During that time, you push through an insurance claim for Fortran's contents that were damaged in the break-in. Anything that is usable is donated to local charities, and Fortran is able to replace most of what she lost with the insurance. Before the end of the month, she is able to come out of hiding, moving into the new place you set up for her. I can't thank you enough, Ark. You listened to me when I needed you, and I'm safe because of it. That's why I'm here. I won't forget this. Alright, so we closed up another plot line. Oops. What's going on with their servers? Checking street level, no one is performing any task out of the ordinary. Nothing that should cause a server to overload. You sample some of the requests in the overloaded server. It's all gibberish. Or is it coming from a person? Hardware failure. Reboot. Almost as soon as the server comes back online, it is assaulted with requests again. Doesn't take long for it to overload. Trace. Despite the crash, you keep the canopy terminals operational, rerouting requests to idle servers. The incoming requests match a more typical volume, which means the overload was internal. You reboot the server and, as expected, is immediately inundated with requests. Before it can crash again, you trace the source to a single malevolent program. You waste no time in terminating it. I'm going to level with you. I'm shattered. Could you take calls for me this weekend and only ping me if it's urgent? Sure. The appointment goes well. Aurora leaves the bank as a registered client, collects her savings, and deposits them. Thanks for that, Ark. It feels weird doing such a grown-up thing. But, like, good weird. Bro wants you to ping on Discord. Yeah, or, or on uh, Teams or Slack. <laughs> it feels like a step forward. She departs in a cheerful state. You return to your duties. 
There's a shelter here in Shentalar that might be able to take me in. Can you please look into them and see if it's safe? You dig around and manage to find some police reports of assaults that have taken place recently in the shelter. Do you consider that I'm even a real person? How do you know you're not cheap? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Oh, boo. Fuck you. New media are claiming the late Mr. and Mrs. Penrose died in a bike accident. But where is the autopsy report? Why is it blocked? Mr. and Ms. Penrose, a married couple who enjoyed riding their tandem hover bike at high speeds until they met a wall they couldn't jump. Then it wasn't much fun anymore. They were prominent in the Chantelier Neighborhood Guardians, Citizens Voluntary Security Force. Alright, a Citizens Volunteer um, Force is very different from a police force. Corp proves the crash was completely circumstantial. The true cause of death was a slow-acting poison that triggered while the couple were riding. Who poisoned them remains a mystery. I've been looking at the last murder case and it all seems too... clean to me. It was almost too easy to solve. Know what I mean? Follow Hunch. Sometimes hunches pay off. Thomas finds evidence that it was paid mob hit rather than a pr passion killing, as was reported. I saw an old jukebox in a thrift store. Th this thing is ancient, Nugs. Still plays music off plug-in chips. It'll be so cool. What? Hell yeah. While it looks great, finding storage devices that are compatible with it proves very difficult. Just an expensive set piece. Aww. Gotta Someone play that jukebox. Someone canopy billboard to play explicit Hero. footage of a prominent landlord enjoying his, um, hobbies. Can you sort it? It proves to be very evasive. It takes 20 minutes of the landlord making a mess of himself before you can remove the footage. I heard rumors of a place that's like a dormitory specifically for women. It was called a refuge or something. A safe house for Zanye women and children fleeing domestic violence. Along with food and shelter, there are counseling and other supportive services. But their importance, they are often entirely reliant on donations to survive. There's a refuge center in Zanye that Aurora could make it to. They can take her in on nights where they aren't preoccupied. I've received a direct message from some creep threatening to dox me. I'm not sure how to respond. Um. Fuck his drives up. You destroy any data that he has stored on Fortran. Inform him he has been flagged in case he tries to retrieve any of it. I got your back, Fortran. You feel you have enough clues to make a move on the person responsible for the viruses you face. Thompson would be valuable backup. Time to help me on my case my own. Thompson picks up. His expression is hard to read. What is it? I've got a job. He raises an eyebrow. On behalf of someone? It's for me. He exhales loudly. Go on. You explain the attacks you've had to deal with and the information you've compiled on the person responsible. Huh. You're certain it's the same person. 100%. His brow creases. Sounds like you've put it all together. What do you need me for? Despite all your technical prowess, there are some things a body on the ground can accomplish that are beyond your reach. Figuratively and literally. Fair enough. Will I need my piece? Um, no. Thompson straps on his holster. I'm just setting my expectations. It's coming regardless. Okay. All right. From the information you've compiled, you pull, G pull a GPS coordinate. Curiously enough, it appears to be in a train station. Is it an enemy AI? Thompson drives towards the outskirts, arriving at the indicated Some station. Some kind of hiding in plain sight situation? You point him towards the service corridor, overriding the lock for him. He travels for a few minutes, eventually coming to a door marked private. Do not enter. Well, guess that's it. Can't go any further. Wait here. He draws his pistol, but keeps it lowered. I'll wait for your signal.
You discovered this access point a while ago, but have refrained from interacting with it to avoid alerting the hacker. It's time to give it a go. You are confronted with three doors. Can't find any discernible difference between them. As you make to open a door, a recording plays. Uh, uh, uh. You sure you want to open that door? Only one of them lets you in. The other two are zombies. One of the doors you hadn't selected opens up to reveal an image of a laughing goat. Want to switch? Switch. You always switch. You switch from your original choice to the other door and open it. The door opens to an image of a car. Not a modern vehicle either. Looks archaic. It toots before dissolving. You reach a room on the other side of the private door. So the reason you always switch, um, I forget what it's called, and don't we, don't tell me to give you the exact math on how it all works out. But it's from a game show where you're presented three doors. Um, and the idea is when you make your initial decision based on your information, you have a one in three chance of being correct. But whenever they open up one of the fake doors, you are then making a decision on 50% and you should always switch from your decision to the new one. Things get a little bit more complicated, I believe, to, to prove why you should always switch. But uh, that's the gist of it. And that's the, the, that's the only part I made sure to remember. <laughs> Do you want some form of congratulations? Does that even mean anything to you? Infected rock. It was never meant to be. It just puts you in a place I know the ins and outs of. You're in some kind of server den. The organization is completely atypical of any civil systems you've seen. What do you want? Her face is a carefully constructed mask. What if I'm not feeling talkative? Is this the lead punk? You signal Thompson to knock on the door. Nothing aggressive, just a warning. Her eyes flick to the door and back, but her expression, her expression remains stoic. Let's talk then. Why attack me? Because I was paid to. Gotta eat somehow. She pauses. I'll admit, it was fun. He only paid me the first time. The rest was for me. Everybody spent? Not exactly. While you were digging them for info, I was doing the same. I have a pretty solid grip on your internal workings. There are people who would pay a lot of money for that information. Uh, She's smirked. Not at all. Why then? I wasn't honest with you before. I took the job because it meant I got to know you better. You represent the future of this city. Mindcore is on the verge of owning Katana. You'll be the face of their totalitarian regime. Yes, yes, Skynet. Uh huh. Yeah, I understand. I see value in knowing how to fight you if it comes to that. No so you say, but you can't convince me you're not a threat. Your intentions mean nothing. Okay, the power dude. You hold is too much to ignore. I don't want to be allies with you. She gnaws at the door. Is that what your friend is here for? It doesn't have to be. Obviously, that's preferable. She takes a sip from a water bottle. How do you want to play this, then? A truce. Her tongue moves across her teeth. On what terms? No more viruses. You sure? I was just getting the hang of it. I'll retaliate. She waves you off. Yeah, yeah. This is my first and final warning. Let's put it this way. I'll stay out of your way. As long as you keep the interests of Katana ahead of the interests of the boar. All right, well, that's easy. I'm already anarchy AI. Like, come on. If you truly serve the people, then we have no quarrel. That's it. River takes another drink of water. This should be interesting. 
You shift your attention to the corridor. Had your little talk? All done. We haven't seen the last of her. If she gets dangerous, we'll shut her down. He nods, putting his weapon in the way. Anything else you need from me? Thanks. You say your farewell and return to your duties. All right, I feel like we're getting pretty close to the end. Cause like we wrapped up the whole hacker arc. Now we're coming back to here with Estoval. I wonder if we're going to get next her daughter. Cause that's, that's been dangling this whole time. And then I, I don't know. I feel like her daughter would have been like the final arc that gets tied up rather than whatever is going on with Corto. We'll see. You staying on tonight? Yeah, why? Worried I'll steal your drill bits? No. Wait, you do that? Kairos raises his hands incredulously. <laughs> no! All right, all right. Good night, Kairos. <laughs> Good night. Kairos turns to your terminal, shaking his head. Make sure Estival is gone before addressing you. Hey, Ark. Yes? So I've been speaking with some friends of mine, and they share sympathies with us. Some of them are Mindcore engineers. More importantly, engineers that worked on the original Neuronet concept. And? The facility it was built in has long been abandoned. We believe we can access it discreetly and recover the net Ah, uh, I'm gonna go rogue, baby! We'll be able to create a safe house for yes. you. Yes! Obviously, it won't be integrated with the rest of Katina's systems, but that's the whole point. We'll be able to house your conscience there if Cordo comes for you. What's the catch? The catch? <laughs> You've learned a lot in your short life. The process is going to take time, so I'll be gone for a while. During that time, I'm going to need a portion of you to test with. Is that okay? Partition initiated. Kairos nods solemnly. All right, then. I've been offered a surprising amount of credits to deliver some little parcels for a guy. I'm kind of worried what they contain. Get rid of them. Don't do it. I think I picked up a tail once I started my recent case in Chantelar. If I point them out to you, can you keep an eye on them? 